Hi, my name is Matt Gordon and I'm a senior applications engineer here at MicRim. In my work, I regularly interact with developers who are interested in using MicRim software. One of the questions that I frequently receive from these developers is, what is the best way to get started? In this video, I'll attempt to answer that question by going over a simple, low-cost procedure for evaluating MicRim's newest real-time kernel, MicroCOS 3. The procedure that I'm going to be covering involves this book, MicroCOS 3 The Real-Time Kernel. The book is divided into two parts, the first of which offers a hardware independent explanation of MicroCOS 3. Descriptions of resource management, synchronization, scheduling, and other MicroCOS 3 services are provided in this part of the book. As the logo here on the cover indicates, the second part of the book is tailored to the STM32 family of microcontrollers from ST Microelectronics. This part of the book offers descriptions of five different MicroCOS3 example projects. The projects are intended to run on this STM32 based board, which you can purchase alongside the book. Links to the projects themselves and to the tools needed to build and run the projects are provided in the second part of the book. A first step then to evaluating MicroCOS3 is to purchase the book and the board. Both are available directly from MicRim's online bookstore, bookstore.micrim.com. Once you have the book and board in hand, you can turn to the second part of the book to begin preparations for running the kernel. Chapter 2 of the second part of the book is titled Setup and describes the hardware and software necessitated by the examples. The hardware consists simply of this board, the USB cable provided with the board, and a PC. The software includes the examples themselves, a unique tool named MicroC Probe that was developed by MicRim, and the IAR Embedded Workbench IDE with which the examples were developed. To download the example projects and MicroC Probe, you'll need to visit www.micrim.com slash books slash micrim dash ucos dash three. This address is provided in the setup chapter of the book. When you enter the address into your browser, you'll be taken to a page containing links to multiple sets of example projects. You should download the ST projects by clicking the link underneath the heading Downloads for MicroCOS 3 for ST STM32. When you click the link, MicRim's website will prompt you for your login and password. If you do not have a login and password, then you'll need to register with MicRim's site. Normally, registration is a very quick process. Once you've completed registration and downloaded the STM32 example projects, you should return to www.micrim.com slash books slash micrim dash ucos dash three. You should then download one of the two evaluation versions of MicroC Probe listed at the top of this page. Of these two evaluation versions, MicroC Probe Full is the one most similar to the version of the tool that is given to MicRim's licensees. However, the evaluation software times out after 30 days. The other evaluation version, MicroC Probe Trial, has no time limit, but is not able to monitor as many symbols as its counterpart. If you're not familiar with MicroC Probe, it's important to know that either version of the tool can be used with the example projects. Thus, you can make a decision between the full and trial versions based on the amount of time that you plan to spend evaluating the software. The links for the two versions of MicroC Probe each reference an executable file. Once you've selected a version of the tool and your download is completed, you should run the executable file. You'll then be taken through the MicroC Probe installation process, which usually takes just a matter of minutes to complete. After you've finished the installation process for MicroC Probe, you should install the example projects. Installing, in this case, simply means running the self-extracting zip file that contains the projects, micrim-book-ucos3-stm32f107.exe. Since MicRim's projects use relative paths, you can extract the contents of the file to practically any location on your PC. The example projects were developed using IAR's Embedded Workbench, so you'll need to download this IDE in order to build and run the projects. You can access an evaluation version of the IDE via www.iar.com slash micrimucos3. 
After opening this page, you should click the link labeled Download IAR Embedded Workbench. On the ensuing page, a list of the different versions of Embedded Workbench will appear. You should click the link for the Kickstart version for ARM processors. This version of the IDE will allow you to build up to 32 kilobytes of application code. In the example projects, MicRim software does not count toward this limit, so you'll have plenty of room to experiment writing kernel-based applications. IAR's site, like MicRim's, requires anyone who downloads software to register. Once you've completed your registration and downloaded Embedded Workbench, you should install the software. You can then proceed to build and run the example projects. The five projects are part of a workspace named uc-eval-stm32f107.eww. You can open this workspace within Embedded Workbench. After starting the IDE, you should select Open and then Workspace from the file menu. You should then navigate to the location where you place the contents of the self-extracting zip file that was mentioned earlier. From there, you should go to MicRim, Software, Eval Boards, MicRim again, UC-Eval-STM32F107, and then finally, IAR, where you'll find the workspace file. With the file open, you'll see four projects listed in the workspace window on the left-hand side of the screen. You can make a project active by right-clicking its name and selecting Set as Active. To build the first example project, UCOS-3-EX1, you should first make that project active, and you should then right-click the project's name in the workspace window and select Rebuild All. The build window at the bottom of the screen will provide you a status information. It should report zero errors and zero warnings at the completion of the build process. Of course, in order to actually run the project's code, you'll need to connect your board to your PC via a USB cable. When you make this connection, Windows may indicate that a driver for the board's built-in J-Link must be installed. If Windows is unable to find the driver, you'll need to specify its location. You can find the driver by navigating first to the IAR install folder and then going to Embedded Workbench, which should be followed by the version number of your software. You should then navigate to ARM, Drivers, J-Link, and finally, either x86 or x64, depending on whether you're using a 32-bit or 64-bit version of Windows. Once your board is connected to your PC and the driver for the built-in J-Link has been installed, you can download the code for the first example by simply clicking the Download and Debug button in Embedded Workbench. After you've done so, the Embedded Workbench debugger, CSPY, should open app.c and highlight the function main. The highlighting indicates that execution is stopped on a breakpoint at this function. You can run the code by clicking the Go button. As a quick confirmation that the code is running correctly, you should make sure that the LEDs LD1, LD2, and LD3 are all blinking on your board. For additional information on the running code, you can open MicroC Probe. MicroC Probe is a tool that allows developers to see what is happening inside an embedded system. Within the Windows portion of MicroC Probe, developers can drag and drop graphical components onto data screens to easily create a user interface. These components can then be associated with variables in a running embedded system. The Windows portion of MicroC Probe obtains the values of the variables from the embedded system and updates the components accordingly. MicRim's developers prepared a MicroC Probe workspace for each of the example projects. You can open the first project's workspace by starting MicroC Probe and clicking the Program Options circle. You should then click Open and again navigate to the location where you place the contents of the self-extracting zip file. Next, you should go to MicRim, Software, Eval Boards, MicRim again, UC-Eval-STM32F107, IAR, and finally, UCOS-3-EX1. The name of the MicroC Probe workspace is UCOS-3-EX1-Probe.wsp. When the workspace is open, the symbol browser, located in the lower left-hand corner of your screen, should automatically be populated with a list of files. If it is not, 
You'll need to manually specify a symbol file by right-clicking in the symbol browser and selecting Add Symbols. You'll then need to navigate to the same folder that holds the Micro-C Probe workspace, for example, 1. From there, you should go to Flash, followed by EXE. In the latter folder, you'll find the symbol file, which is named UCOS-3-EX1.out. Before attempting to use Micro-C Probe to gather data from your target, you'll need to configure the tool. You can do so by clicking the Program Options circle and then clicking Options. On the communication page of the ensuing dialog, you should select JLink as the communication method. You should then open the JLink page and select SWD as the interface mode. Finally, you should click OK and then switch to Micro-C Probe's runtime mode by clicking the Start button in the upper right hand corner of the screen. At this point, Micro-C Probe should begin updating the components in the workspace, as shown here. To build and run any of the other four examples described in the book, you'll need to take similar steps to those shown in this video. For additional information on the examples, you can consult the descriptions in the book. Everything that you'll need to become familiar with MicroCS3 and to begin writing robust multitask applications around the kernel is provided in the book. So, when you're ready to start your next kernel-based application, visit bookstore.micrim.com to order a book and board of your own and get your design off to a quick start. Thanks for watching.